So as you can see from the image in front of you, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about Overpower. started by FLIR in 1995. It went in a lot of directions and ultimately ended up in the hands of Marvel in 1997 or so. It started off with this line. I was just called Overpower. I have other decks showing up. Um, the starters, for the most part, aren't too hard to come by. There's five of them. The biggest issue that we have is getting usually like the fifth one, but uh, they come with... Four set characters, a set of missions, which are right here. Uh, so this one has Hobgoblin. Let's get to the other ones. Wow, this thing is a mess. Uh, really just got to move stuff around. I have not sorted this one out, so obviously I need to get that done. But it comes with Dr. Octopus... Sabretooth there, and where's my fourth? Deadpool. Now, needless to say, this is long, long, long before we had the really fun movie with Deadpool in it, but I'll just show you some quick numbers and talk about it as I go on. I actually played this when it was brand new. I was like 12 at the time. So you have your stats here, your energy, your fighting, your strength, and that's the maximum amount that you can shoot. Um... I believe it's 20 points to knock someone out. Or you can do what's called a Spectrum KO. So if I get energy, fighting, and strength on one of the uh, opposing characters, I can also knock them out with that, even if they're one-pointers. So that's kind of fun. Now, when you play, you set them up in a T formation. So let's say that's my reserve. And then my front row would be these three. Now, these three can attack. Things can be played on my reserve, and there's a few that let your reserve do something special, but generally nothing else. So we saw Deadpool as a 374. Go to Hobgoblin, a 263, which by all definition seems inherently weaker from all that, and I'll show you in a minute why these numbers do and do not matter. Sabretooth, a 185. Inversely, Wolverine is very similar. I think he might be like a, a 284 or something like that, but they both have 8 in energy. And then here we go, Doc Ock at 365. So, uh, you know, decent stats. From all these ones have the inserts, I can kind of show off all this stuff. So this is what the first wave had. I actually believe I started with Clobber in time because uh, it had War Machine in it. But um, each of these generally have... One of these random, one, you know, there's usually one character that has an eight on them uh, in one of the areas. You know, uh, Thing had an, an eight strength. Uh, where is, I know Professor Xavier, where is he? I uh, can't seem to find him, but anyway. There we go, Professor Xavier was eight in energy. You saw uh, Sabretooth had an eight in fighting. And then there were booster pack available ones. Now, when you started opening packs, you would get one mission card... You're supposed to bring a matching set of seven. It wasn't anything major. These didn't really do anything for like the first year or so. There we go. They provide a little bit of history. You can see up here, if my camera bothers to focus, that says four of seven. So I should have a full set of all seven of those. That's one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. So I have them all. I'll hold them up. Now, since this was from Fleer at the time, they were doing really... the. This is more indicative of the trading cards Fleer was putting out. You know, that little bit of foiling. Just excellent art. Just absolutely excellent comic book art. The order of these really didn't matter, but again, until they started making missions matter. I'm not sure if they had planned from the start, but, you know, there's that. You had this little... Quick reference card, and let me tell you, these things, I remember piling these things up, because I feel like these were in the boosters as well. This very much, you know, helped out, you know, for getting the game rolling. Now, you had, like, boosters, you had exclusive cards. So, for example, only Deadpool obviously can play this card, and you can store some of these. Like, if I had this under Deadpool, I could store it under him to play later, or I could play immediately if his Deadpool is in one of my forwards. Doc Ock was there. Then, for example, we had this five and fighting. The five and fighting could be used by anyone who meet or exceeded that. And from the team, let me move some stuff back. I have stuff everywhere to kind of give you a better look at what we're looking at with the team. So everyone has at least a five and fighting. So that card is universally playable. There we go. And, you know, then say, example, the six and fighting. Well, the six and fighting can be played by everyone. That's fine. And then we have lower numbers. 
obviously more common. There's another Doc Ock exclusive. Let's start setting him over there. Then you had these. Usually they were like weapons or tools. So if, as long as I played at least a seven. Uh, sorry, I think it. No, I played exactly a seven. Uh, throw that on to make it a nine. You know, it just made him harder to block. You know, do more damage, that sort of thing. You don't want to play too many because you ob you obviously needed to do more. There's a seven in fighting. There's a one. So eight in fighting. Obviously, only Sabretooth can use it. Now there's up to plus threes, and they, I believe, only came in the boosters. So, Axe level four may make an additional attack because usually you can only do one. There's a three in energy. Grenade. So, Sabretooth obviously has this ability for one of these cards to avoid an attack. Good. Then you have these multis. Uh, I believe these went up to four. Uh, it's, it's been so long since I actually had my collection. It's, it's been a long time. So Hobgoblin here, who, who only has a two energy, had a card, though, that acted as a level seven energy. So again, even though there were stat limits for what they commonly can use, that doesn't mean that their fighting you know, stuff c couldn't override or do other cool things. Venture total for the battle... All right, there are some more weapons. I mean, the art on this is just absolutely phenomenal. That's one of the things I love. The game itself is overall rather simple to play. I'm showing you this because then we're going to pop actual random seals. Well, semi-random. There's Deadpool. So it says remove one hit. That removes one of the hits, the actual card. Not not one point, an actual card. Uh, permanent record is kind of like your, your, you know, just whatever's piled up on top of you. So with Deadpool, obviously he could remove. So if I land this four on him and sitting around someone's going for a spectrum, I can play that, remove the entire card, which is good. So here is training. So there's your flexibility. One of those, and then that gives it a plus. Uh... I remember being when I was younger, I really hated these cards. <clears throat> Excuse me, I really hated those cards. But now I see they're more useful because this, specifically right there with that, you know, five or less, well, all my guys have less than five in energy. And you're going to play uh, all types of these cards. Obviously, a one. And the one is because that's the lowest Sabretooth can play. So there we go. There's another Hobgoblin. There's some more weapons. Uh, Sabretooth has the healing factors. So I mean they've they obviously they've done their due diligence to make sure that these things work. But those trainers help boost up the lesser attacks. And sometimes when you're trying to defend, that really matters. I mean, by definition, I get a five up to a nine. And obviously that's a very special circumstance, but that is indeed something to consider. There's my little booklet that I'm dropping. So it's I mean it's the right size for that. Man. Brings back memories. So this is the Deadly Foes deck. Uh, as a whole for the system, as I keep bumping this camera, this one was decent. Uh, not a lot of exciting things, but I'd say for the sake of uh, play, it the fact that you had two regenerators, well, you know what I mean, between Sabretooth and Deadpool, um, Sabretooth had the ability to do a multi-attack off of his special, that's what those other cards were. It was a good deck. Middle of the road, uh, good for skill. Uh, I, I'd say it was very competent. But some of the other ones were, you know, they specialized really heavily in playing specials and everything else. So let's take a look at these three. These are sealed. Now in here should be either four heroes or four villains in a sort of random mix. I believe they also had booster exclusive bodies. <sighs> did I get all of the plastic? No, I did not. So let's take a look at these. These came out a little bit later. I believe it was mid-1996. They took, you know, they blew us all away, and they're like, hey, we're going to do DC. It was really more Batman Superman at the time, and they, they later did JLU. So here's our mission. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So full mission. That's good. We'll have to see. I, I remember I once mapped out a starter box of all these things, and we'll see. So we have Thorn right down there. That's for villain. You'll notice we added Intellect. Well, a lot of the DC villains are kind of more intelligent. Um, It looks like I was wrong on that. So there's Thorn, her three specials, followed by Superman. So I was wrong. I swore that these were, I guess, are just four characters. I swore that they were 
four of one side or four of the other. And you can see here, as I'll move that over, he obviously is a hero. You can see he's not too bright, apparently, according to all these things. You can see some of the average abilities that we just show. Uh, all the special cards are doubled when determining Venture Total Fist Battle. We got Robin, which, very good intellect, good fighting, not great in the others. Specials are very varied, which is good. So they have stuff, that's when they started really introducing, um, or pushing more, I should say, for um, teammates and whatever. So here, this is after the, uh, I think it was called Mission Control, I believe was the set. You start seeing that you have cards that are based off of this. So this says, Eye of the Storm on it. And that mission group, if I can get to focus, says Eye of the Storm. So... It was a very cool way to, I guess, add some complexity to deck building. But you also have this stuff where you had these, you know, these card files or whatever, which were based off the mission. So it actually, it actually mattered what your mission was, where in the other game, it, it really did not. So let's see a few more of ours. Reserve character may use power cards to defend any frontline character this battle. Obviously, that breaks the rule I was talking about earlier. Uh, there we go. New card with the word avoid may be played. Also, again, pretty good. And here, you didn't see it in the other one, but the teamwork is basically if you can get, you know, two uses together, they add all these bonus. So these are really good for getting your spectrums. Uh, they... Yeah, you can see right there. So, obviously, this, this set seems to really worry more about strength. Um, well, it has strength, fighting, and intelligence in that little grouping there. Allies. These did exist in, in the first game. In the end, sorry, the first set. There we go. There's the word I was looking for. There are boosters, or weapons, or tools, or word, word eludes me. There's calling them universe cards. Well, because obviously it's to flesh out the universe. Here, you know, they were training with the intellect. You'll notice there's a lot. There's going to be a lot more intellect shown in these cards since this is the set that introduced it. There's a four variable. So one, two, three, four. There, and then we just have our basics. So we'll set all this aside. Huh. That's our fourth. There we go. Commissioner Gordon and the Gotham City Police Department. It's, it's, I, I, from what I remember, this one was very big on, um, their specials. Like it had a lot of very different specials. You can see it's very much middle of the road, but cool little mix. We're going to set this one off to the side. Once I get all these types and stuff and everything back together, but unlike, um, well, I shouldn't say unlike. So th like I said, with it being semi-random, you did get missions with matching card files you did get at least three specials per, you know, character. I don't want to call them heroes, but per character. So you do have a fully functioning, absolutely playable deck right off the bat. There we go. So deck two. Uh, from what I've seen and shopped for online, these are still rather affordable. Usually uh, 10 or less, especially if you buy multiples, which is what I did. So we already have... A different mission into the depths so that's cool let's go through some of the really nice art obviously after being in shrink wrap for 15 or so years things tend to stick so all right we're moving differently we have lex luthor there he is with eight intelligence like i said the um intelligence special uh, intelligence factor with knockout, good was so because many of the DC villains are usually more intelligent. Obviously, they're you know not everyone, such as Killer Croc, are going to agree with that. You know, what, let's skip right to the end. Let's see what our fourth is, so I don't use up Bane. So here we had. Aren't these all four villains? So Bane's a villain, Killer Croc is a villain, Knockout's a villain, and Luthor's a villain. So I don't know. That's so weird. Wait, was Thorn a hero? Did I get that wrong? Maybe I just really don't pay attention well, which is a possibility. So I got Gordon, I got Robin. Here, I'll show you what I'm looking at. I'm a Thorn. Is Thorn a hero? No, Thorn. Thorn's a villain. It says right there, they're a villain. Very odd. 
And I swore, like I said I, before, I swore they were all heroes or villains, not a mixed match, but whatever. So we'll go through three of our missions. And then I'll see if there's anything really special about that. So there's intellect again. There's intellect again. We got here are our allies. There's some universe cards. Another intellect one. Going quickly because, yeah, then you just get one through six in the four types. Doesn't matter. And to keep this one running smoothly and quickly, let's pop our third one. I'm hoping a shipment shows up and I have a full set of the original sealed decks, but with the internet, you never know. I've already had to get two refunds for my mail. So our last set right here. Booklet out of the way. Into the depths. So same mission, but we get Cyborg with his. We get Catwoman. Good. We get Brainiac. Obviously, I mean, look at those stats. Eight energy and seven intelligence. That's that's some pretty... I have a blank card, which... Interesting. I'm going to do a card count later, see if there's anything to mess with. Okay, let's look at our fourth. We get another Bane. So... All things considered, considering I only have one repeat character, that's a pretty good open for starters. I know when I uh, opened up, I think it was 12 starters is what came in a display. I know I got way, I got, I got a few decks that were within one character of each other, so I got way more repeats. There are four multis. There's our one through six in intelligence, one through six in energy, one through six in fighting, one through six in, oh, sorry, two, yeah, one through six in strength. So... Good variety as a whole. I mean, we'll be testing these things out later. But I wanted to kind of go through that real quickly. And the history of this as, you know, while I round out the video, the history of Overpower is kind of interesting because there were definitely some peaks where I knew that this game was getting played a ton. And then, I mean, but it was also 95, which means some of the issues that we had were what else was coming out. This is when like Decipher was getting their Star Wars and Star Trek, you know, games up and running pretty hard. Um, right after this set was, I believe it was Overpower IQ, which was basically like a, a catch-up set where all your previous heroes from the original set right here, the ones without the, you know, intelligence factor, uh, could get the get their version of intelligence to compete but i mean you still could play without them you didn't you don't need all four kinds you don't but the first expand i remember the first expansion that came out had juggernaut that was awesome um the game seemed to have really good releases uh, i know collecting for it was sometimes a little hard because some of the rares were like one per deck uh specials but obviously they were really good like um both Iron Man War Machine had like this homing missile thing that was, you know, a, like a level eight multi. You know, you just got to pick which side it was. It's like, oh, it counts for this. Or ones that definitely had like um, Spectrum KOs built in, uh, stuff like that. So yeah, I'll cover it more in depth when we do our review and, and discuss more of the other stuff. But you got to see the two sides of, of uh, for lack of a better, I'm going to use the word Spectrum again, where it started out initially as a very simple game. Let's get the zoom in on that. And then it moved into a slightly more complex game with without a lot of major problems. The bigger issues later are then they started like introducing headquarters and stuff like that. I wasn't playing during that time, but that's when you like the missions really matter. Like there's only like four or five missions being played in the top eight. Uh, the HQ mattered. They had some really insane. Um, oh, I can't remember some of the characters. Are they, was Apocalypse one of them? I can't remember. But anyway. I'll get more in depth in that later when we go into it. But this was sort of like an unboxing, a brief little history of everything. I'm hoping to get the entire first set of that because Punisher, the deck with Punisher in it is the hardest one to find. And the one after that, um, is it Maximum Carnage? That one was like the second hardest one to find. Those two were always a problem. The X-Men ones you can find all day, every day for sub $10 real easy. So if you just want to get into this game, seriously, you can get either, either of these products, any of these sealed decks, Go for you can get them for sub ten dollars, you know, all day on eBay, and still play the game. It's when you want to start collecting. Uh, there are still people out there selling singles. The game is 
sort of alive, but it's more like uh, with collectors or people who play it, but they own everything. So that's a quick little overview on Overpower, as well as an unboxing of the three starters you may have seen in our mail halls. So until next time, Cardboard Resurrection, if you want to like, share, subscribe, that does help us out. If you feel you're in a position to help us, uh, help us financially, there is Patreon, patreon.com slash Cardboard Resurrection, all one word. And um, their one tier, the Citizen Influencer, does let you vote on stuff like this. Do you want to see us play Overpower sooner than we play Simpsons, sooner than we play Luck and Logic? Do you want to hear us talk about the game? Do you want to hear us review those things? Because we have like 40-something games to get to. The order which is not predetermined, that is determined by the polls on the, on the Patreon website. So we will talk to you again next time.